20, y'all. Praise the Lord, P-O-M. Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated for a moment. He, my brother Cook is, is something. But we thank God. I, I really thank God for being here, and I thank God for, for my church. Uh, we appreciate our pastor uh, in his absence, and, and we're going to pray for him in a moment. But we just, we, we <laughs> Brother Cook just got me. He got me all messed up. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot to do when you, when you want to be saved and when you really want to be saved. Uh, you know, we've all had a journey. We've all had things that we had to come through in order to uh, get to where we are. But uh, we, that's, that's the good thing about it. We all had to come that journey. And, and, and so I, I thank God for my brothers. I thank God for my sisters and all uh, of POM, and I thank God for our pastor. Uh, he's a great man. We love him, and uh, we are praying for him. Me and, me and my wife, we have a text with him and uh, Sister Melinda, and we, we, we text them and, and encourage them and pray for them, and, and I would admonish us all to do the same. Uh, we're going to pray, uh, but if you could, Luke, chapter 10. Uh, that's what we're going to uh, come with our text. But we want to we wanna pray for our pastor and, and, and Sister Melinda. I, I, just, I just feel like we, our prayers uh, are strong and our prayers after, after that worship uh, we can get a prayer through. Amen. Amen. We can get a prayer through. And, and, and I feel like we're in the mode of where we're not waiting for God to touch us, but we've already reached up and got a hold of him. And so we're going to pray for our pastor, and we're going to pray that God would touch them and, and, and keep them and protect them because uh, that's what we want God to do. Amen. Lord, we thank you, oh God. We ask you to touch our pastor and Sister Melinda, oh God. We, we, place a, we ask you to place a hedge around them, oh God. We stand in the gap. Oh God, we intercede for our leadership, oh God. We intercede for our pastor. We intercede for his wife. We intercede for their home. Oh God, we intercede, oh God, for their life. Oh God, their vehicles, oh God. Oh Lord Jesus, all of their appliances, everything, oh God, that's attached to them, oh God. We intercede and we stand in the gap, oh God. We stand on guard against the enemy, oh God. And, and we stand on guard so that we can protect and keep, oh God. Our pastor, oh Lord, and his wife, oh God. We thank you and we love you, oh Lord, for all that you've done. Everybody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Luke, Luke 10. And, and uh, we're just going to read uh, verse 29 because I don't want, I don't want to prolong the time by reading the whole thing. Uh, it says, but he, Luke 10, 29. Luke 10, 29. <laughs> I got to make sure I say that three times. I got somebody to be watching me. Amen. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And I, I want to just talk to you for a few minutes like a good neighbor. Like a good neighbor. You can be seated. Like a good neighbor, we 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 uh, are reading a text that that everybody knows, which is called the, the the they have named it the Good Samaritan, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And uh, the Bible says a certain man went down. Jesus was telling this parable, and he said a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now you would wonder why would Jesus start this parable? He started this parable because a lawyer, an a, a, a expert of the law, stood up and tempted him. And, and his first question to tempt Jesus or to Get Jesus, trip Jesus up is what do I need to do 
to inherit eternal life. In other words, what do I need to do to be saved? And, and Jesus tripped him back up. What did he asked him, you a lawyer, what's written in the law, expert of the law? How do you read it? And he answered in Jesus, he said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus, he said, you, you're right. If you do this, you're going to live. If you do this, you're going to be saved. And, and, and this, this kind of messed him up again because he, he kind of stepped back. He had to drop it a gear, and he had to say, hold up, hold up. Who is my neighbor? And, and, and Jesus begins to tell this parable. Now, in the past few weeks, uh, we've heard some life-altering messages. Brother Cook, he preached on the halfway house. I, I was crawling for, for a couple of weeks on that one. He, but he reminded us it's just, a, it's, it's just a resting point and not a permanent place to live. Then next, Brother Bonavillian, he preached, bon, Bonavillian, he preached on taking the next step. Then Brother Keaton, he told us that we needed to enjoy the journey. The pastor told us to allow the wind to be at our backs and let the wind of God help us go in the right direction. And then last Sunday, pastor dared us to do better. He dared us to go farther. He dared us to be more in God. Tonight, I don't want to veer away from what God is doing. But I, I want to, to be on the same wave tonight, and I want to do what God wants me to do. And, and I want to challenge us to be more like a good neighbor. A neighbor, as we have been learning in our men's devotion, is anybody that we come in contact with. I'm sure we all know this, and we can quote scripture to back ourselves up and come to a conclusion. But, but tonight I want to help us, first of all, open our eyes to what it is not to be so good a neighbor or to be not so good a neighbor. Second of all, I want, to, I want us to realize that we all have room to grow in the area of being a neighbor. The Bible says in the text, and behold, a certain lawyer, he stood up and he tempted him saying, Master, what shall I do? And, and you can tell by this man's composure and by his, the way he was standing up that he was tempting Jesus. But we have to realize that, that we can't go to Jesus any kind of way. We can't go to Jesus with our mind already made up that we know the answer. Hallelujah. We got to go to Jesus with an humble heart. We've got to go to Jesus throwing all of our experiences out the door. I don't care what your name is. I don't care who you are. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've been through. If you can't give up who you are before you go to Jesus, you might as well not go to him. I, I'm going to, I'll say it again. Hallelujah. I've already taken off my tie. I've already taken off my coat. I'm not scared of no, we can throw hands up in here. Hallelujah. We can let you know what you need to do, but don't go to Jesus with your mind made up that you know more than him. I can't go to God like I know more than God. I got to go to God on my knees. Hallelujah. I got to go to God with my heart humble. Hallelujah. I got to go to God with my head down, not my shoulders broad, but my shoulders slumped because I realized that I need something from Jesus Christ. And what I need, he has. And if I don't go to him the right way, he won't give it to me. And, and so I, I can't go to him any kind of way. But the question that the lawyer asked is still a question that we need to ask today. Whether you are lost or whether you are saved, what do I need to do to inherit eternal life? What do I need to do to be saved? In verse 26, Jesus asked him, what is it written in the law? And he answered, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all 
of thy heart and all of thy soul and with all of thy strength and with all of thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And Jesus told him he was right. And this is still true today. If we can love the Lord our God with all of our heart and with all of our soul and with all of our mind and all of our strength, and we can love each other as we love ourselves, then we can be saved. The answer Jesus gave, he threw this lawyer back in the corner. But this lawyer decides to justify himself. He asks, who is my neighbor? And, and, and I think it's very notable that the expert asks Jesus, who is my neighbor, instead of asking Jesus, how can I be a better neighbor? Come on, come on, somebody. He asked the Lord, who is my neighbor? He wanted to put the light on somebody else, but he did not want to look at his own shortcomings. I'm here to let you know that I don't have time to look in your life. Hallelujah. I don't have time to judge you. I don't have time to put you down. I don't have time to look into what you're doing and how you're doing and try to put you down. All I have time is to look at my own mess. Hallelujah. All I have time to do is to look at how I'm living, and if I can get the Lord to intervene on that, then I'll be all right. But he was worried more about everyone else's shortcomings. And this expert of the law was willing to justify himself. This meant that he already knew that he had a problem loving others. But instead of dealing with his own problems, he wanted to shine the light on the problems of others. When we go to God, we have to realize that we are not going to God to get somebody else straight. But we're going to God to straighten out our own lives. I don't know about you, but I got a lot in my life that I need straightened up. Oh, hallelujah. I got things in my life that I need the Lord to fix. Hallelujah. So I don't have time to look at your life or study your life. All I got time to do is to work on my own life and get in the Lord's presence and let the Lord do what he needs to do in my life. And so Jesus began to tell his parable because it looks like this Lord, he's just not going to listen. I'm not talking about you, Brother Krill. I'm talking about this parable. This expert of the law, he just won't, will not listen. And so, I, I, I mean, I, I, I've read the parable. I'm going to give you the new Hodges version. Uh, verse 30, a man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. I like to think he was going to the fish market. He wanted to have a fish fry later on that night. But Jericho had the best fish. And so he couldn't get it in Jerusalem, so he was going to go to Jericho after he left church. Because the Bible said he was a, this, this man was going to Jericho, and he fell among a band of thieves. These thieves took his clothes and wounded him and left him half dead. A priest, he was coming from church too, just happened to be coming that way. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. A Levite, he also happened to pass that way. He saw this man, went to study, and and study what happened to this man. And after he finished studying the man, he, he, did, he came to the conclu same conclusion that the priest had come to. He crossed to the other side and passed up this wounded man. But then a Samaritan, he, that he was on his journey, came and wounded this, uh, came, came to this wounded man. And he studied what had happened. And he had compassion on him. He fixed up the wounded man by binding up his wounds and pouring in oil and wine to make this man feel better. He set the wounded man on his own beast while he walked and brought the wounded man to the next available hotel. And while they were at the hotel, this Samaritan took care of the wounded man. And you would think that'd be enough. But the next day when the Samaritan departed, he took out some money and gave it to the hotel manager. He said, when he, when he gave him this money, he told him to finish taking care of this wounded man. And he promised the hotel manager that he would pay him back if he had to spend more than what he gave him. Now, now that's, the, that's, that's the parable. 
Now, now the first thing that we need to recognize is that this man fell among thieves. Most times when we hear this parable or, or read this parable, we immediately compare ourselves to the priest or the Levite. But unfortunately, God has given me the assignment tonight to help us realize that there is another comparison that we should consider. He wants me to warn the church today so that it could, it, 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 we, we need to, I need to warn the church today that there's a spirit that would love to get control of the church that it could stop the move of God. I'm here tonight to preach against the spirit and preach against this spirit and put it in check. This is the spirit of the band of thieves. The band of thieves, they laid in wait for those travelers passing on this narrow, secluded road to Jericho. They took his clothes. They wounded him. They left him half dead. I'm here to warn somebody today that this world that we live in today has the spirit of the band of thieves. It allows the traveler to believe that they are on a safe road. And, and that they are going to make it to their destination. In all actuality, the band of thieves, they are laying in wait. And, and they, they pounce when you least expect it. They steal from you and they wound you and they leave you half dead. I'm here to remind us today that we are all travelers in this world. And we are en route to our final destination. But at some point, I'm sure that we've all fell among thieves. The thieves have left us hurt. They have left us half dead and left us naked. But glory be to God that there was a Samaritan coming along. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know today that there was somebody looking after me. That somebody came along and they picked me up when I was down in the miry clay. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know today that when I was down and out, there was somebody that came to pick me up and put me back in. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad today that you are not still laying on the side of the road? That you're not still in some secluded area waiting to die? But somebody came along, hallelujah, and picked you up and helped you out. So we're all travelers, but now the issue at hand is the possibility of this same spirit that tore the journeyman down in the world would gain new residence in the church. God forbid. We don't want the spirit of the band of thieves in the church. We don't want to lay wait for those that come in on their journey and pounce on them and kill them or leave them for half dead. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is the message today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, 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 I know you was looking to roll and to run and to, and to get under the seat and bite the pew, but I'm here to let you know that I'm here to warn the church against a band of thieves. Hallelujah. I'm here to warn the church against the spirits that will cause harm to your families. I'm here to warn the church against the, field, the spirits that will that cause harm against the fathers. I'm here to warn the church against the spirits that will cause harm against the wives and the children children and break the families up and cause the church to be divided. You can bite the chew later on, bite the pew later on. Hallelujah. But I'm here to bring light to the enemy's tactics. I'm here to let the enemy know that God's revival can't be stopped. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to say it. Hallelujah. I'm here to let the enemy know that, that he can't do nothing against the church. I'm going to stand flat-footed. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show him my posture because I'm not afraid of him. And I'm going to let him know that one tooth devil, I'm going to let him know that he can't do nothing to the church. Jesus took, looked Peter in the eyes and said, I also say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
I've come to serve notice that that one two devil that the, that that is that that the church is on the rise and the kingdom is on the for the kingdom of the devil is on the fall. His kingdom is falling. However, we have to be on guard for the kingdoms the, the, for the devil the enemy's devices and we have to stop him from infecting the church with the spirit of the bandit band of thieves. And, and, and I, I think we should consider asking ourselves, am I a part of the band of thieves? Am I a part of that? Do I lay in wait? Do I wound? Do I leave for half dead? Do, do, do I steal from those that, that, that are in need? I think we need to consider asking ourselves, am I a part of the band of thieves? It wouldn't be wise to talk about the band of thieves without first mentioning that Jesus, what Jesus said about the thief. The thief coming not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. You see, the enemy wants to steal to kill, and to destroy. But the Lord wants to give you life. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to give you not only life, but life more abundantly. I'm glad to know today that we serve a God that's not just given us a life to live on this earth, but he's given us life more abundantly. I'm glad to know the day that even though I'm going through a journey in this world, that there's a journey, a place that I'm going to go to after this world is over with. I'm glad to know the day that even though I might have rough times right now, but there's a time when rough times won't exist. There's a time that I'll be with him and he'll be with me and all my tears will be dried away. All my pain will go away. All my sickness won't be no more. All I need to do is worship him for eternity and that's where I want to be. So then we have to realize that we are here on a journey. But we have to be wise and know that on this journey there are thieves when they, they are waiting in, 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 in the alley where we are traveling. And we have to be on guard. Hallelujah. Men, we have to be on guard. Wives, we have to be on guard. Children, we have to be on guard. This doesn't exclude anybody in the household because the enemy wants to grab the household first and then he'll come into the church. But I'm here to let you know that if men are praying early in the morning or men are praying late at night, if the wives are praying early in the morning or the wives are praying late at night, if the children are praying with their parents, then the enemy cannot come into the house and tear it up. But the enemy has to go somewhere else. So I'm going to stand on guard and I'm not going to let the enemy tear up my house. Brother Bure, is that the thieves have been waiting for you. Hallelujah. But I'm here to let you know that the Lord is with you. I'm here to let you know that the Lord is with you. The band of thieves have been waiting, laid in wait for you and your family. But I'm here to let you know that you don't have to be dismayed. You don't have to be disgruntled. You don't have to be uncomfortable because God is with you. And as long as you're with him, God is going to take care of you. Brother Hawkins, the band of thieves, they're waiting on you. The band of thieves are waiting on you. But I'm here, here to let you know that all you have to do is keep on your journey. Oh, hallelujah. I feel it in the Holy Ghost. Brother Hawkins, the band of thieves, they're waiting on you. But if you just stay on the journey, if you just stay with the Lord, hallelujah. If you just keep on going, hallelujah. I'm here to let you know that there's no thief, there's no killer, there's no bandit, there's no thug. There's nothing that can harm you as long as you have Jesus with you. You see, because the thief wants to take your identity. He wants to take who you so He wants to take who you are in God. But I'm here to let you know that all we have to do is just continue to trust in him. 
Oh, hallelujah, because if we trust in him, it don't matter what somebody else think I am. It, it doesn't matter how they think I talk or how they think I act. As long as I'm with Jesus, I can keep my identity in him, and he will shine a light on what I need to do. So they come to steal. They want to steal your identity. They want to steal your possessions. They want to steal your family. They, they, they want to take everything that you love. And, and then they kill. They, they, they kill any hopes and dreams. And, and this way you will consider taking your own life. And, and then they destroy. They, they destroy any proof that you've ever existed. And, and they want to destroy your character and, and your legacy and your future generations. The, the good news is that we can fight what the enemy is trying to do. All we have to do is be a good neighbor. I guess I got to explain it a little bit more. All we have to do is be a good neighbor. Oh, hallelujah. Now, y'all came on board because I said it again, but, but I, I, I got I to gotta get a little bit, little bit deeper. So, uh, oh, all right, I already unbuttoned the top button. Let me go ahead and go on. All right. If you're always looking around to see who you might be doing, if you might be doing better than somebody else, you might be a part of the band of thieves. Chew on it a little bit. <laughs> if you're always looking around to see who you're doing better than, or if you're doing worse than somebody else, you might be a part of the band of thieves. Because eventually you're going to try to go take what somebody else have. Mouthful, chew. If you find yourself at your friend's house gossiping and tell Baron about what how Sister Allison sung, why Brother Darren always got to leave, why did Pastor have to preach on that, he know I told him that in confidence. You might be a part of the band of thieves. Got to chew. You got to chew because if you, if you try to let it go down whole, it's going, you're going to choke. You got to chew. If you're always trying to change someone else's identity, but you don't never change. Oh, I'm sorry, Brother Bureau. Let me turn back this way. He told me not to preach that way. Amen. Then you might be a part of the band of thieves. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, it gets real. It gets real because we have to realize that there are some things that we do that steal from others. There are some things that we do that kill others. There are some things that we do, we end up leaving others and leaving them half dead. But if we could just love each other as neighbors, hallelujah, if we could just learn how to love one another as neighbors and be a good neighbor, then we won't have to worry about what somebody else is doing. We'll worry about what we're doing and being better towards somebody else. If your attitude is that I can't deal with that person anymore, they're on their own then you might be a part of the band of thieves. Now the question is, what can I do to be a good neighbor like the Samaritan? First of all, we have to realize that the only difference between the Samaritan and everyone else is that the Samaritan was on a journey. The Bible says in verse, 20, that verse 33, but a certain Samaritan as he journeyed. The priest just happened to come that way. The Levite just happened to come that way. But the Samaritan was on a journey. I'm here to let somebody know that you should be on a journey. You should not just be living life as it happens. But everything should be on purpose and in purpose. Oh, hallelujah. We are on a journey and we have a destination. All you have to do in order to have a journey is to get a destination. And you only have two choices. One of them is heaven. 
<laughs> you know the other one. And if you can just get it in your mind that you are ha making a destination to one of those two places, then you are on a journey. And, and, and so the, this Samaritan, he didn't get caught up in the halfway house. He did take the next step. He was enjoying his journey. This Samaritan had the wind of God at his back. And this Samaritan dared to do more and to be more in God. How do we know this? Because this Samaritan was coming down from Jerusalem. In the same way the priest and the Levite were coming down. And what's in Jerusalem? The temple. The difference is that the others just happened to pass that way. But the Samaritan was on a journey. Why was the Samaritan on the journey? See, what you don't know is, is that history says that the band of thieves, well, they, were, they were consistent mostly of Samaritans. And so I can imagine this certain Samaritan wanting a difference for his life. So one day he decides to go to Jerusalem. That day he heard a word coming out of the temple. And I can imagine because he can't go in the temple, he's just standing outside and he heard this word and this word touched his heart. It said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. I'm here to let somebody know that the Samaritan left Jerusalem changed. Hallelujah. He was a different man now. I'm here to let you know when you come into this house, you can't leave the same. But you got to leave this house a different person. Hallelujah. I, if I were you, I would reach up and pull God down until I get something from God. I wouldn't leave here the same way I came in, but I would leave here a changed man. No wonder the Samaritan had bandages. No wonder the Samaritan had oil and wine because he knew what was going to happen on that road. Hallelujah. Because he used to be a part of that crew. He used to be a part of the band of thieves. But you know what's the good thing about it? He used to be a part of it. Hallelujah. But now he's a changed man. Now he's a different person. Now he doesn't steal, but he gives. Now he doesn't wound, but he heals. Now he doesn't leave a dead, but he stays with. Because he's a new man in God. Now he's been changed. And now he's loving the Lord with all of his heart and with all of his mind. Now he's loving the Lord with all of his soul. And then now he has, coming down this road, he has the, 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 the opportunity to love his neighbor as he loves himself. And, and he was ready. You got to be ready to love somebody. It, just, it, it doesn't happen by chance. I mean, we, we can look at the priest and we can look at the Levite and we can put our nose down on them and, and say, oh, they wrong for that. But a lot of us would have fought, fell into the same thing. Coming home from church, just preached, I don't have time to stop and help somebody change a tire. I got to get to the buffet. Oh, Hallelujah. But that's an opportunity to win a soul. That's an opportunity to show somebody that you are a neighbor. The Levite cleaning up the church. Water bottles everywhere. Tissue everywhere. And you know what's on the tissue. And how do they let their kids just tear up the little paper and just, just little bitty pieces I got to clean up all this. I got, I, I got to turn off these lights. <sighs> Sister Allison, why are you still up there? Why, why are y'all still working on music? It's time for me to go home. I got to go to Jericho to get some fish. What's going on here? Y'all need, let me turn off the lights. Click, 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 click. And you know, Sister Allison, Sister Allison going to ignore you. She going to keep on going. And then finally you get out the church, and you go towards the fish house, 
Hallelujah. <laughs> and you see somebody on the side of the road. Now, I've done my job already. You know how I know I've done my job? Because I cleaned up the church. I picked up the water bottles. I picked up after people's kids. And I picked up those snotty napkins. I'm here to let you know that if you think that your job here ends here, you might be a part of the band of thieves. Your job does not end in this building. Your job starts out there. Oh, hallelujah. I've got to win a soul. I've got to win a neighbor. I've got to show somebody that I am a neighbor. So what, what can I do to be a good neighbor? Don't steal, but give. The bandit stole, but the Samaritan gave. The Samaritan was able to use his experience and what he knew to help somebody else out. What experience do you have? What have you come out of? You use what you come out of to show somebody that you are a neighbor. Oh, hallelujah. And then they're going to say you're a good neighbor. You don't never take that title and say, I'm a good neighbor. No, I'm a neighbor. And then they'll say you're a good neighbor because you're doing what God has called you to do. What, what else can I do? Don't wound but mend. The bandits wounded the man, but the Samaritan helped to mend him up. If we want to be like a, a good neighbor, we have to be the remedy to the hurts and sufferings. We can't be a part of the problem, but we must become the remedy of the problem. We have to mend where people are torn. I'm going to say that again. We have to mend where people are torn. Where we find sickness, we have to bring healing. And where there's disease, we have to bring a cure. This is the church. And then the last thing we can do is don't leave, but stay. The bandits left the man half dead, but the Samaritan made sure the man was alive and well. Our job doesn't end when somebody crosses the threshold of the church. In actuality, our job has just begun. Everybody stand. And, and we've got to stay until we know that our neighbor can make it. I, I can't leave you. And I can't assume that you're going to be all right. That's why we, we have accountability. And that's why we have submission. That's why the, the Lord teaches through his word about accountability and, and submission. Because I don't care how long I've been saved, I need somebody. And, and, and we never get to the point of where we can be by ourselves. Now, by nature, I'm, I love to be by myself. Amen. I, I love to be by myself. I love to, 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 to put my AirPod Pros on, turn the noise cancellation on, and be in my own world. But that's, <laughs> y'all had to hear my sister, Lord have mercy. <laughs> but that's not what God wants. God wants us to be neighbors. Anybody you come in contact with is your neighbor. And we have to learn how to be a good neighbor. Amen. Let's, let's, let's pray. Let's pray. I want us to pray that, that God would help us to become a good neighbor. Lord, we thank you. And we appreciate you, oh God, for allowing us, oh God, to hear your word and understand your word. We ask you, oh God, to touch our hearts and touch our minds, oh God. Oh God, make us ready for this world. Make us ready, oh Lord Jesus, to be a neighbor, oh God, to those, oh God, that are without, oh God. I know, oh God, that we're here and we love each other and we love on each other, oh God, but, but that's just, oh God, sometimes just a mask that we put on, oh God. 
But let us, O oh God, in depth be neighbors, O oh Lord Jesus. Let us love one another, O oh God, and let us keep one another, O oh Lord, and let us think well about one another. Let us speak well about one another, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, let us not be a part of the band of thieves, O oh God, but let us, O oh God, be like the good Samaritan, O oh Lord. And let us be good neighbors one to another, and not only to each other, but to those that are outside, O oh God, of these walls, O oh God. We thank you, and we love you, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. Please travel home safely. Travel home safely, and... And, and we're going to be in prayer for our pastor and, and for what they are doing and their traveling mercies. And we love y'all and thank God.